And welcome back to calculus. So we're going to do a, another volume example here. And what we're looking at this go round is actually going to be using the shell method as opposed to uh, previous versions. Now this is a similar problem, but the, the basic idea is the same, but how we're breaking this up is going to be different. So I'm going to start by kind of creating this shape here like that. Now this in, uh, you have to use your imagination here a little bit, uh, but the idea here is in, in washers we were making these cuts across. And here what we're doing is we're kind of making cookie cutter slices out of this. So we'd be kind of nesting this. So when we cut this out, what we're actually, or when we make this cut, what we're actually doing is making a kind of a, a cylinder cut out of there. So that's what that shape really looks like with the axis rotation kind of rowing right through here, so there's y equal to three is what we have right there. Okay, so we're still trying to find the volume of this object and, and maybe that'd be a little help for us to go back and do that real quick and think about what the shape is here that we're, we're dealing with is that when we rotate this, what do we get? Well, we would end up with something that looks kind of as a circular center and has this kind of like a, uh, a, a peak to it like that, except we don't have the top, right? So it looks kind of like this, maybe like a volcano on the outside. And on the inside, it has kind of a, a curved inner piece like that, right? So what we're doing here is we're, we're taking these slices here, right? From here to here, we're kind of doing these cookie cutters and it's, it's this piece right like that that we're taking out all right so and then we're going to be stacking those up so the idea that here that what we need is uh, we need to find the surface area of this wrap here if you will and then we'll be wrapping piece after piece after piece and there's a reason why it's called shells because we're nesting these inside of each other so we would have um, kind of take this out a little bit we'd have a slice here and then we'd have another one surrounding it like that and another one surrounding it like that and it would keep going around and around with those nestings until we had the entire thing drawn out all right so what do we do how do we deal with this well we're still doing the integration from somewhere to somewhere but how do we build this well if you think about what we're doing here we have a cylinder and if we were to take the cylinder and flatten it out we turn it into a big long rectangle looking thing and we'd have the height and the circumference well, that height is still the height, but that circumference is 2 pi r right there, right? So that's that distance right there that we need. Well, that's that circumference part, right? So that's what we need to find is this, well, how do we figure that? Well, that's, we need that radius right there, right? And then we need that height right there. So we'd be doing to find this this area to find this volume here of the object, we'd be needing to find the, that those individual areas and add them together. So there's the two pi for that constant outside, and then the r times the h, and then d, whatever whatever that needs to be, the d something. And, we'll, and that's going to depend upon the axis of rotation here is which d we're using. So in this particular instance, uh, when we start stacking these things, we're we're kind of working our way laterally outward from the axis of rotation. In this instance we'd be stacking those things outwardly so each one would have is going to be dependent upon what this radius is and that radius is stacking in such a way that we're going to end up being counting these in terms of well there's the y value and think about that bar from there to there that's a y right so this is going to be a dy event here for this particular one and if we were to go the other direction it would be a dx so now what? What do we what do we do with this from here? So now we need to, and this is important for us to do this first because when we define R and we define H, we need to be able to talk about these in uh, good terms and have the right variables in, in there. So what are these links and how are we building? How are we talking about this as we go through this here? So the radius is going to go from here to that spot right there on that edge. And what's determining that? Well, that's determined by the axis of rotation, which is a distance of three, and then this y value right there. So it's actually gonna be y, or the three minus y. 
Well, that's pretty much what we need, right? So the h, what's determining the h? Well, the h is a horizontal distance in this instance. And it's going from here to here. So that's actually from that whole length there, if you will, is just some x value. And actually, if we break it up, we, we, we can put a little dotted line here. We'd have the x1 and the x2 to break that up. In, or the, so it's actually, in this case, h is going to be some x2 value minus some x1 value. All right? So what's determining those? Well, we have actually this curve here defining that x value right there. So that x2 value, that longer distance, um, that overall distance out there is x2. So that's going to be determined by my uh, by our equation here, that outside equation, which is this. So we need to rewrite that. So we got y is equal to x squared, which means we're dealing with the square root of y equal to x, right? Now, how do I know that I'm using y? Well, because I've already determined that this is dy. So I have to rewrite this as square root of y minus, well, what's determining this inside edge? Well, this inside edge is that other equation of g of x, and that is just thinking of as y is equal to x. So that's an easy one. So that's just y right there. So that means that our h value here uh, is square root of y minus y, all right? So then we can go back up here, and we have both of these equations now in terms of y. So now we can rewrite this as 2 pi times the integration from somewhere to somewhere. We still need to figure those values out. But we have our r, 3 minus y, and we have our h, which is the square root of y minus y, and then dy, all right? So now what are these locations where we're counting from to 2? Uh, so we have the intersection point here. Let me switch colors. We have this intersection point here and that one right there. So once again, we just need to take our two equations and set them equal to each other. So x squared minus, or is it actually equal to x? So that's x squared minus x equals zero, which factors into x minus one and x equals zero. So x is equal to zero and x is equal to one. So this is going from zero to one there. All right, so now we got it. So now all the thing left to do is to multiply everything out and integrate this and then use our, fu our fundamental theorem of calculus to plug in zero and one to figure out what the volume of this would be. And th those processes are included in other videos, so I'm not going to go through that process with this right now. But again, this is the idea is that in this instance, these shells, and this is the biggest, probably the hardest part of this is to visualize what you're doing is you're having these shells that stack around each other, kind of like a, a Russian doll set or if when you were a kid you had those nested cups and you stack the cups inside each other. That's kind of what we're doing here with stacking these one inside the other inside the other to create the entire solid that we need to deal with. And each piece, well, we, what we need is the service area around that. So if you're thinking about it being a soup can, what we need is the label. We need the area of the label there. We don't need the top or the bottom. We just need the area of the label that goes around the can. That is determined by the height of the can and the circumference of the can. All right, so we've had those two pieces, which are dependent upon R and H. We define R and H based upon our given functions, whatever those are, and then we rewrite our equations in terms of whatever variable we determined needed to be uh, uh, done, and we're counting that variable in terms of how we're stacking these. We're going to be stacking these along this axis here, which means we're going to be nesting them around each other. Instead of moving down the axis, we're moving out from the axis, which is a function or a va a values of y are going to be the ones changing. You can normally look at this radius as being the indicator of how that's going to function. All right, so I hope this was useful. and Reach out if, we, if you have questions or you want to see additional videos about this topic. Take care.